as you see, we're in the left hand. We min raise a hand like 4-7, and I think 4-7 is a hand that you could definitely limp pre-flop when you're playing versus recreationals and it's something that you could have in your in your limping range because of a few reasons first of all limp limp c betting works wonders versus a lot of recreationals and even versus regs when you do it when you do have your own limping strategy which we've talked about before in, in, in earlier in the video um, you're still very balanced in this spot, so you're going to have some traps, and you're also going to have some air in this spot. And when you're balanced, it's very hard to play versus somebody like that because you don't really want to have too wide of an isolation range. And, you know, a lot of players struggle in that aspect of the game in the big blind. So either or, but being aggressive in the small blind is still going to be fine. Any flat calls here. And this is a flop where... I, I know that Dan likes to play turbos, and it goes for the same with hypers. When you have an ace flop that's super dry and you're in the small blind, you're going to want to rep this all the time. So I think a c-bet here is going to be great, and I would even suggest making a smaller size. Something like 30, 35 is going to do wonders here. So let's see what Dan decides to do, and 30, even better, right? And what's behind this sizing there, Dan, when you bet on this type of board texture? I feel that 30 does the same job as 40. Yep, I, I mean, and it also allows uh, my opponents to either call too wide, or you know, fold, fold kind of. Uh, it, it makes it tough basically for them to play against. Exactly, and you're doing this with an ace, and you're also doing this with four seven complete air ball. So you know, he might take this as some, a, a weaker bet, or he might play back sometimes. And if he plays back when we have four seven, well, that kind of stinks. But when he plays back when we have ace queen, well, you know what? We're fist pumping there. So it's a sizing where we're going to get a lot of folds in general. And like Dan said, thirty is just as good as forty in this spot. You should never go bigger than half pot, in my opinion, though. And we do get the call here, and the turn is a jack. So what's going through your mind here? First hand of the game, uh, we see about a dry boardy flat calls, and what's usually the process right now for you um, with a realist game plan? Well, right now I'm I'm likely going to double barrel this. The jack is a good card if he has a, a pair of twos or a pair of eights. Um, a lot of recreation players I've noticed, like the three bet jam, ace x pre flop as well. So mm -hmm. I, I'm really not putting him on an ace right now. Okay. So I think the best play is to double barrel here, and then if he calls, give up on the river. And I think that's something, uh, Dan brought up something very interesting. They're going to be three-bet jamming a lot of ace-x, and more so with recreationals than regs, is the regs are still jamming ace-2, ace-3, ace-4, ace-5, and some re some regs aren't necessarily doing that anymore. Um, but his range now looks like some king x maybe some twos maybe some eights we really don't know on the flip side if i'm playing devil's advocate here is this player going to fold an eight is he going to fold a two do we really understand you know are we playing versus a calling station are we playing versus somebody who's very tight so sometimes you know barreling on this board isn't going to be the greatest idea because dan if you bet here and he calls turn what's your plan on the river my play on the river is to give up if he calls the turn. Exactly, and I think that's the right play because usually if a, if a recreational is calling two streets and not falling to a third, but I'm just not a big fan of betting two streets and then giving up on rivers in general. Sometimes, you know, on such a dry board when somebody calls, I'm going to give up, look for some more reads in this spot, and just wait for a better spot to exploit my opponent. So I, even though I do think that Dan is doing the right thing here by barreling and shutting down on turns, I think it's something better to do versus somebody you have a little bit more experience with, knowing that you're playing versus a guy who is floating quite a lot of flops, and then you want to be more aggressive on turns and rivers. But for now, I mean, it depends what type of player you want to be. I think it's really close in the long run. Do I have control? Yeah. All right. So he checks back. We end up barreling here. And like I said before, this is really close. I think that if you are just an aggressive player in general, it's completely fine. If you're on the more conservative side, I, I, I think there's no problem with checking back here and not falling to the trap of playing versus recreational, who is going to hero call you. We're going to basically lose half our stack on the very first hand with a hand that has, has absolutely no equity here. So once again, very close. And so he calls and the river comes and he donks out. So we, we kind of like this, right, Dan, when... You know, we sometimes have a very tough uh, decision on the river, and then the player just donks out, and we have to fold, right? We have seven high. We don't have to worry about making the big-time bluff on the river or checking back and being too passive. So we get to fold here, and we're very happy about that, in my opinion. We don't get to see what he... Oh, 
he ends up showing with 5-6. So this kind of goes with what I said before. Now, we're playing versus a guy very first hand. We know nothing about him. And this guy just floated two streets with 5-6 and donked out on the river, right? So that's why when you're playing versus an unknown, you really want to figure out his tendencies and not be so aggressive because eventually they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. And, I, I agree. Or they're going to be too passive. And if we have an ace here, he just donks out. We, we snap call, and, and, and just like that, we win because he's that spaz. He's that spazzy. So that's why I think sometimes checking back with absolute, absolutely no equity is fine. If we did pick up like a gut shot or a flush draw, then sure, barrel off in a sense. But you really want to be careful. Definitely when you're, you know playing the lower limits or if you're just starting playing the hypers and it's going to be something that might help you out in the long run.